I fully support the removal of the old pro-Confederate windows at the National Cathedral, where men who fought to preserve slavery were enshrined like biblical heroes in a bizarre parody of sanctity. Artwork that promoted the lies of the lost cause and glorified traitors like Lee and Jackson never had a place in the National Cathedral or in any house of worship. I am glad these windows are gone, and I was eager to see them replaced with something that reflects a more noble cause. That's why I was so disappointed when the new windows were unveiled. In this video, I will explain why I find them so unsatisfactory and why they fail on an artistic level. Please note that I am attacking the medium and not the message. Racial justice is one of the most important causes in America today. These windows fail because they don't convey that message in a way that is beautiful, inspiring, or that makes sense. They do a disservice to the noble cause they are supposed to represent. Number one, the use of color. One of the most amazing things for an artist working in stained glass is being able to use brilliant shining colors. It is not possible to be more luminous than to have the sun itself radiate and illuminate your colors. Even the light shining through stained glass becomes an art treasure in itself. Knowing this, why would an artist working in stained glass choose to use color so sparingly? The brilliant reds, blues, and greens that characterize other windows in the cathedral are hardly to be found. Instead, white and gray are most prominent, giving these windows a washed out look. What is the reason for this? When I think of the struggle for civil rights in America, white is not the first color that comes to mind. What little color there is, is concentrated on the bottom half of the windows, creating an imbalanced bottom heavy look. By contrast, the top half looks too white, too empty, washed out and unfinished. There is some color used on the figures, rich blues and bright oranges, even an interesting combination of pink and green. But even the figures are mostly wearing white or gray. And why are most of them wearing blue jeans? To accentuate this point further, let's look at the top half of the windows by themselves and see how well they stand on their own. The second window is particularly weak. Look at this. How long do you think it took the artist to come up with this uninspired, empty design? This is a window at the National Cathedral, folks. Number two, composition. Let's look at how the tall vertical space of the windows is used. Two of the windows have significant areas where nothing is going on. No signs, no people. Just the background of white and blue irregular shapes. If you are given a space in one of the most prominent religious buildings in the country, I cannot understand how you would not put every single square inch of it to good use. I can't see a good artistic reason for leaving these spaces blank. When I look at this wasted space, it's almost as if the artist is saying, I can't think of anything to put here, so I'll just leave it blank. Number three, the use of text. The artist has chosen to make text the primary feature of these windows, but it is a text that looks random, arbitrary, and doesn't make sense. The words and phrases selected have a weak connection to civil rights or social justice. Let's look at the words themselves. No foul play. I can think of several powerful slogans associated with social justice in America. We shall overcome. Black Lives Matter, no justice, no peace. No foul play is not among them. When I think of the phrase foul play, the first thing that comes to mind is a detective story, a phrase used to describe a violent death. I associate the phrase with a police investigation. And as we all know, police aren't exactly the good guys in the struggle for social justice. In what world is foul play synonymous with social injustice? 
Let's take a closer look at the way the artist depicted these words, specifically the fonts used. The text appears in several different fonts, which appear to have been chosen at random. I cannot see any connection between them. First window. The word fairness. Why was this particular font chosen? It looks like something you would see associated with the outdoors or summer camp. It most closely resembles wooden fonts, like something you'd see carved into wood. Here's the closest example I could find. Second window, not. A word that means very little without context, and the artist does not seem to have provided any. Combined with the first window, we seem to have fairness, not blank. Fairness, not foul play? The font here looks almost like something painted on a protest sign, but why are both the sign and the letters white? This is one of the weakest areas and looks very much like a half-finished, incomplete drawing on paper. Third window. The top, no, actually has some life to it. The rough edges suggest anger, a word that is shouted rather than spoken. Beneath it, though, in stark contrast, we have no in a completely bland, sterile, uninteresting font. It's a font you might see used on a restaurant menu, a restaurant that doesn't have decimal places in its prices. The third instance of text on this window, the enigmatic phrase, no foul play, uses a font that looks hand-drawn and somewhat whimsical, like something you'd see on the cover of a children's book from the 70s. Again, I see no connection to protest or racial justice. Fourth window. The font here is completely bland and uninteresting. The arrangement of the phrases is somewhat creative, but it is an arrangement that looks like something created by a marketing department rather than a sign hand-painted in angry strokes by a protester. Honestly, when I see this, the first thing that comes to mind is text that could be used to market a video game system. Conclusion. Redressing the United States' ugly, undeniable history of racial injustice is one of the most important causes in America today. It is a noble cause. It is a cause that should inspire and inflame our hearts. When you take artwork that does not reflect the highest standards of creativity, inspiration, and artistic labor, put it in a place of honor and say, this is what we represent, you are doing a disservice to that cause.